trying to find out how to set up your Anki controller? Stay tuned to find out. Well, hello there and welcome back to my journey into becoming Dr. Nanette Varela. I am Nanette, or you can call me Nani. And this is the time that you've been waiting for. If you are a Anki crazy person, you need to get your Anki controller. And if you're wondering how do you even use this, how to set it up to your computer, this is the video for you. Setting up the Anki controller can be really easy, but there is a lot of little steps that not everyone talks to you about, which is why I decided to make this video because I struggled so much after my first controller got disconnected and I changed my computer from an HP to an Apple computer right here. Um, so it was a very different transition, but I will be talking about how to connect this for your Apple computer and I will let you guys know what is the program to use for an HP computer, but this video will be for Apple computers. Connection with your Apple uh, Anki controller. Before we get started, I have a little package from Ana Luisa that I want to share with you guys all the little things that I got. And if you are peeking, you can kind of see what I'm wearing because they are my favorites and I do not take them off. So I want to show you guys real quick what I got. So one thing that I love about Ana Luisa is that all their packaging is recyclable friendly. So all of their packaging is completely recyclable, reusable. You can use it to store your jewelry. It will stay safe and protected. And if you keep it in a nice little area, they look aesthetically cute. And they the best part is they protect your jewelry. Another thing is they are not expensive. It is affordable, trending jewelry that is inexpensive. You guys know me, I'm a medical student. I'm always looking for the cutest little details and always looking for a final way for me to look good all the time. And with Ana Luisa, this is something that I could handle without any issues. If I want a trendy jewelry, I know where to go. And with one of those things that I wanna show you first are these rings that I got. So I have this one which is a Cuban link ring that matches my bracelet that I got for Christmas. And I have this, I have this one right here that is a full diamond ring uh, with little diamonds. They had this one in gold, if you can see. This one's in gold, they also had it in silver, but I am more of like a gold person, so I got them in gold. Let's start off with these two little packages right here. So let's start with the smallest one because I think the best things come in small packages. So let me show you guys. These are a pair of earrings that I chose. They're really cute and dainty. They have a little diamond design that looks super nice. I wanna use this one to put behind on my second hole. Um, this was called Zuzane. And I love the fact that they have like names for everyone. It's like if your friends are your jewelry is your friend. Next one, I think these are my necklaces and I am in love with both of them. So let's start with the first one. So the first one is like a Cuban link chain necklace. I like to use this one as a layering with my other ones that I have from them because it makes it look very nice and aesthetically pleasing and it just matches like the ring that I have and my other jewelry that I have. The next one is this cutie right here. So this one is called Alea and oh my god Alea is so elegant. Let me show you right here. She is like a diamond necklace. It is short and one of the things that I love about them is that they have this extension. Let me show you right here. They have this little extension right here for the end so you can um, choose how long you want the necklace and I really like that because it makes it choose like you could choose how long it do you want it to make longer shorter and I just love how nice this would look at night with a really really nice dress like look how beautiful that is and of course if you are interested in getting something especially now that Valentine's is getting close for your mom for your girlfriend for your sister for whoever you love you can get a discount go to the link in my bio I will add it on the caption and you can get a little discount and find something cute for them alrighty so I'm starting with an 8-bit do Anki controller it's not an Anki controller you just use it for it it is actually a Nintendo switch you could use it for Windows Android and for 
from MAC. So um, when you open it, uh, you have a, actually the instructions come with it. You have like a little um, handle that you could use it for. And then I have the Anki, con the little controller. In the instructions, there will be, you know, all the manuals on what are you going to use it for you have you know the usual the guide to how the numbers are for the controller and then you have all the instructions here depending on what you want to use it for so this is also a little game pad so it can either be a game pad or a controller so basically what you're going to first do is read until you get to where it says keyboard mode because if you want to use it for Anki it has to be under a keyboard it cannot be under your gamepad so I will be showing you how to connect it but the instructions are here on the keyboard uh, mode and this is how you're going to connect it to your computer so you have the start button and the select button and when you have here on the top you have the right you have the right and the left so in order for you to turn it on, you can turn it on with the start, but again, I want it to connect it as a keyboard. So I'm going to press the start button and the right button up here, I don't know what's it called. You're gonna press both of them at the same time and then a little blue light is gonna pop up right there. I hope you can see it. It's gonna start blinking and that means that it's searching it up on your computer as your Bluetooth. So the next thing you're gonna do is go to the Bluetooth on your computer. Okay, so you're gonna go to your Bluetooth area and then normally you're gonna see that here on the nearby devices. So first is gonna come out either as a little pro controller here or you will see the keyboard. So you're gonna connect it as the keyboard and you're gonna click connect and it's gonna connect and it's gonna get removed from the blinking light to a blue still light. You're gonna go to Google and you're gonna type in Carabiner Elements and it's usually the first link that you're gonna see and you're going to download the one that pops up here. Once that pops up, you're gonna open it and it's gonna open a package and it's gonna pop up here as the installer. You're gonna click continue, install, and then that's gonna pop up. Once you finish downloading it, you're gonna go to your settings. This might pop out even before, but just so you know where it is, you go to privacy and security and input monitoring. So you're gonna have to accept the settings for it to get approved. So if you notice, I have three sessions, a grabber, an observer, and an event viewer, okay? So you're gonna keep clicking on the carabiner elements on this corner here, on the top of your apps and you're gonna keep clicking it and it's gonna keep popping up it's just something that you have to keep doing until you don't have all three turned on you will not be able to connect your controller so you're gonna keep opening up there's gonna be two viewers opening there's gonna be a carabiner event viewer so if you go to your apps you will see it here you're gonna have an element carabiner event viewer so you're gonna keep keep clicking on them until you have all your settings pop up as Carabiner Grabber, Observer, and Event Viewer, they have to be on. Now the next thing you're gonna do, you're gonna go to your notes. I have it opened already here, and I already have it configured so I could find out what each button means. So what you're gonna do, let me turn on back my controller is, I'm gonna turn it on and I'm gonna click on whatever button I want. So if I'm gonna click on Y, like I know my Y right now is a one because I have it assigned as one, but you're gonna click on Y and as you can see here, I have it written out as I, okay? So if I would click B, then it would come out as J. If I would click A, it would come out as G and et cetera. So what I'm gonna do is I know that when I click X, the assigned letter would be an H and then a G for A, J for B, etc. Once you go in, this is what it kind of looks like. You're gonna have all your devices and you're gonna go to the 8-bit to zero. And normally this is gonna be empty for you, but we're gonna go through that. 
You can also go to the event viewer and if you click on the button itself, you can click on it and it would pop up. Mine, if I was to click on down, I have one. If I was to click on other buttons, I already have it set up. So now you're gonna go back to your Carver elements, okay? And you're gonna click on only the 8-bit to zero. If you add it to your other keyboards, even though you click on any letter, it will pop up. So you gotta make sure that you stay at the 8-bit to zero. So then you're gonna do is you're gonna add an item, okay? And then you're gonna convert. So you see how I had the letter Y was for an I. So I will change I to a one because I want for Anki to be one because when we go to the Anki app, let's say I click on a deck and I want to click space. If I want space, I will put it assigned to whatever number I want. And then you have, again, hard, good, and easy. And this is all belongs to a number. So again is one, right there, your shortcut is one. Hard should be two, good should be three, and easy should be four. So that's what I want my keyboards to say. And then I want it to be space bar to go to the next one. So I will go back to my settings and I will again, make sure that you write out the ones the letters that they belong to each button so you could put it according to what setting you want. So if I wanted Y, Y was assigned to the letter I and then with the letter I, I'm gonna change it to one because I want one to be again. Two would be X, X is my H. So H would be two. G is my three, I have it as three, so I do one, two, three is A. So I change G because the button A belongs to the letter G on the keyboard and I want that to be a three, okay? And then B I do as four, so B is J and I will change it to four and then F, my space bar, is going to be my up arrow here. So my up arrow is an F and I will change it to space bar, okay? Don't forget that you have to do the, write out the notes first so you can see in your notes, okay? What letter is which? That's why I have it written down here for myself. The most important part I remember for you is this part right here, your input monitoring, because if your settings does not allow for the controller to override the computer settings, you will not get anywhere. You're gonna be there for two and a half hours and figuring it out. So make sure that you're gonna keep having this open. The way that you're gonna keep opening this is when you download it the first time, it's gonna pop up here on your browser on the top settings right here. This is your Caraber, okay? You're gonna click keep clicking on it, okay, and launch event viewer. And it's gonna keep popping out here until you get all three of them. You're gonna do it for each, for the event viewer and for the actual elements, okay? So that's how it kind of looks. So my up, my up arrow, or technically it's my right arrow, I do space bar, and then if I want again, for one minute I do Y, space bar two, space bar three, space bar four, space bar. And then you can change the right or the left to scroll up or down, but I don't really have that set up. I don't really matter for me. So you're gonna go back to your settings, you're gonna add the item, and you're gonna click on the button so you can find out what's the letter that belongs to this button and change it back and you can click on what um, option you want. So you're gonna click on it, you're gonna look for arrows, okay? You can look for letters, you can look for number keys, that's how you're gonna put one, two, three, four, functions on the keypad, media controls. So you can convert it to anything you want. Modifiers, so you look, so you have space bar here, you could scroll up, scroll down, return, escape, delete, tab, anything you want. If you notice, my Apple internal keyboard doesn't have anything. 
and none of them two have anything. So make sure that you only do it for the 8-bit two, okay? Not for all of your devices. For an HP, you're gonna use Joy2 Key, okay? And it's the same concept. You're gonna download it here on Enjoyable or your Joystick Matter. And basically it's gonna be the same concept. You're gonna open your notes and you're gonna click on the buttons and change them. It's the same concept. You have to approve the settings. Don't forget to check out Ana Luisa at the end of this video so you can get someone special a nice gift or even for yourself. If you're interested in getting a discount, go to the link in my caption and start shopping some Ana Luisa. So I hope you find this video helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to DM me or comment down below what questions you have. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!